first of all, I want to say that I do not dislike Elizabeth Warren. I think her she has some great policies. She does have a lot of good plans. She is fantastic when it comes to big business. She really knows her stuff. She's a fantastically, amazingly smart woman. But, and this is not status quo saying this, this is me saying this, I support Bernie. I don't support Elizabeth Warren. And it comes down to the policies. So even though people say, you know, Elizabeth Warren has a plan for that, she's the policy gal, I support Bernie because of his policies. He has been consistent for decades. His plans, in my opinion, are much more thorough. They go much further. They don't take that middle ground where where Biden likes to live, but where Elizabeth Warren finds herself often as well. Um, Bernie's plans are bold and what we need right now, particularly because the earth is dying and we won't have a planet left for our kids, uh, our grandkids, generations to come. We're not even talking about generations to come at this point. We're talking about 12 years. Uh, the, you know, what's happening right now with the Amazon rainforest is devastating. My, my 12 year old, uh, son actually came up and he said, Hey mom, you know what you should, um, let me look at the, the text message here. He's like, you know what you should cover today? You should mention that the Amazon is on fire. He's like, the media is not covering this. So I, that was kind of a proud mom moment because, well, he's following the news a lot better, <laughs> you know, following those things that are undercovered. He has concern for the environment. But the fact is that the Amazon is on fire. Devastating fires are happening everywhere. Devastating floods are happening everywhere. The climate is in crisis. This is like five alarms. Everybody do everything we can right now because this is a huge, huge crisis. This is a catastrophe. And, and people like Joe Biden are putting out these little plans that will, that look okay. Like, oh, look, Joe Biden cares about the environment. How nice. And that's enough for some voters. It's not enough for me. It, it needs to go much, much further. And in my opinion, Elizabeth Warren's plan needs to go much, much further. You'll actually see when we go deeper into Bernie's plan that his plan is going to cost quite a bit, but that makes me happy. His plan, I believe it was $16.3 trillion, whereas the next highest plan was Jay Inslee's at $9 million, and then Beto has one around five, excuse me, not million. If I, I believe I misspoke there. I meant to say trillion. So Bernie's is at 16.3 trillion. Inslee's was because I say was because he dropped out just last night. His was at 9 trillion. Beto's at 5 trillion. And then we have Elizabeth Warren, I believe, and we'll, we'll fact check this as we go through. I believe hers was at 2 trillion and then on down with Joe Biden and friends. So Bernie's plan is bold and we need bold action right now. And as I mentioned, that is, I am personally saying that because of his bold action, because of his bold policies, that's why I, as an individual, not as a journalist, support Bernie. But that it doesn't mean we can't look at the facts. It doesn't mean I can't be objective and say, yeah, Elizabeth Warren has good ideas. She is a lot bolder than other candidates. She is progressive. Um, we get a lot of crap for this, and Jordan has said this too, but if, if Elizabeth Warren is the nominee, I will vote for her against Donald Trump. In my opinion, that's not even a, a question. It's not even a question. I will absolutely vote for Elizabeth Warren if she's the, the nominee. But this narrative in the media that Elizabeth Warren is the only one with a plan for that, that she's the, you know, the the it girl of the summer of policy is just not true. Bernie has been coming out with plan after plan after plan. His plans are thorough. His plans go further. And as I said, it's that bold, bold, bold action that I believe we need right now. So Elizabeth Warren is really, really marketing herself on this. Elizabeth Warren has a plan for that. You can see here this picture. This is in GQ, uh, their online version of their magazine, I guess. Uh, she's standing in front of Elizabeth or Warren has a plan for that signs. Uh, GQ is branding this the summer of Warren. They're talking about how 
well things have gone for her, how long her selfie lines are, how many people are, tu are turning up to uh, see Elizabeth Warren speak, and how she's largely doing that because she has these these plans and these visions, and that has to do with her marketing, and the, the media is eating that right up. So as you guys might know, I'm not originally a journalist. Journalism is something that I've been very passionate about for a very long time. It's sort of my childhood dream sort of come true to be doing this now, but by trade, I am a copywriter and marketer. And so I have a lot of, and my, my degree is actually in psychology. So I have a lot of background in the psychology of marketing and how people and brands and companies present themselves in certain ways um, so that the, the market responds. So here we have Elizabeth Warren branding herself with all these signs. These Elizabeth Warren has a, a plan for that signs and driving that home. And the media has picked this up really, really strongly. They, they don't even present it as, you know, oh, Elizabeth Warren brands herself as this candidate who has a plan for everything. They say Elizabeth Warren has a plan for that. She's, she's their girl. They really, really, and Jordan has covered this a lot, so I won't go super in depth into it, but they've really pushed Warren as um, exactly what, what she wants to be pushed at. They've pushed Warren to the top of their coverage in, at the cost or at the expense of Bernie. So even though Bernie's coming out with all these policy proposals and things like that, they only focus on the fact that Elizabeth Warren has, has these plans. It doesn't matter that Bernie's coming out with plans. There's a media silence about Bernie. And when they aren't silent about Bernie and about his policies, because it is all about the policies, they are bashing him. And there's no other way to describe it, really. They really, really, really like to bash Bernie Sanders in the media. They like to talk about how terrible he's doing. When they talk about top candidates, they're happy to talk about Biden. They're happy to talk about Warren. Somehow that number two spot in there, Bernie Sanders, doesn't get mentioned. He doesn't get the headlines. It just, it just so happens that they talk of Biden and Warren instead, or whoever else, Mayor Pete, or whoever else is, is the shining candidate for them at the moment. And right now, that's, that's Biden and Warren. Warren, who has a plan for that, except the reality is it's Bernie who has a plan for that. And that's not to diminish the fact that some of uh, Warren's plans are quite good. Just they don't go far enough. They are not bold enough. And oftentimes, I hate to say it, oftentimes they look a little bit too much like Bernie's plants, kind of like someone's borrowing <laughs> from some policy and some progressive um, policy ideas here because she sees what's working. She's been very good at marketing herself. Uh, honestly, I, I, I definitely think people can change. I absolutely think people can change their politics because I personally have. It was Bernie who really woke me up and uh, turn me into a progressive, turn me into a democratic socialist personally. Again, I'm not speaking for the channel, although we are progressive independent news. Um, I, you know, I, I was probably like middle of the road Democrat before, like I liked Obama and stuff, but it was Bernie who woke me up to policy and just how important this stuff is. So it wasn't that long ago though that Warren was a Republican. She said she's a capitalist to her bones. She said she will take corporate cash in the general. So she has these plans. She's a progressive. She has good progressive policies now. But there's a reason that, yeah, some billionaires, I, I believe it was two billionaires. Um, I will need to fact check that who have donated to Warren's campaign so far. Uh, no, no billionaires have donated to Bernie. They, they wouldn't because it's Bernie and his policies are there and the length of his record is there. So I don't want to sound like, like, yay, rah, rah, Bernie. I, it's not my role to be an activist for Bernie or to just praise Bernie, but it has to be said when it comes to the policies, it is just not true that it is only Warren who has a plan for that. Bernie has a plan for that. So um, let's look at a couple of Bernie's plans here. So Bernie in the last 
five days or so has come out with three new um, plans and, and Jordan has already covered this so he has a new plan to, so I won't go too in depth um, on this but Bernie has come out with a new plan to bust Amazon's union busting and he has a uh, criminal justice plan aimed to cut the prison population and then today as we will go pretty in depth into he has a new climate plan a new green new deal climate crisis plan but just to kind of hone in on the idea that bernie has been at this forever he has had these ideals and these progressive policies forever he's had these plans that he has um you know talked to he's really revamped them and made them much more thorough but the the basics for his plans have been in place for decades and here is one uh clip that People for Bernie shared. Um, here's Bernie Sanders showing how you talk to middle school students about climate change in 1987. Not, it like hardly any warm the polar ice caps could melt in like Florida. Precisely. The point being that if you don't think that raising temperature a few degrees is an enormous consequence, <coughs> you're very wrong. Because it has it doesn't mean just that oh boy, we're swimming a few more days. It means that the type of, of rays that come down from the sun will make us vulnerable to disease. It will have an impact on the polar caps in melting them. And it gets back to the, the point that she made, which is that everything relates to everything else. Okay, when that loudspeaker interrupted us, it relates to us. It relates to the conversation that we have. Everything relates so that's to everything else. Bernie Sanders in 1987, very... speaking to middle school students about climate change. But that's, that's Bernie being Bernie, talking about climate change way back when. He isn't someone who just recently hopped on the climate change bandwagon. He isn't someone who just recently discovered that there's a crisis. He's been ringing these alarm bells for a long time. And focusing on the policy, the policy that he released today on climate change is the most comprehensive that we have. The media just can't report it any other way because it is simply the truth. There's one video that I wanna play for you before we move on from Elizabeth Warren and before we talk about the details of Bernie's climate change plan. And this is a clip from, I can't remember, I can't, I think it was Cuomo. Sorry about that. I think it was Cuomo and it's uh, their, their forecaster, Harry Enton, who is going through the numbers of candidates who are running and whether or not their support is very strongly for them or if they're kind of wavering, if they are able to get excited about other candidates. And in Elizabeth Warren's case, people are able to get excited about other candidates, as you'll see. And then we'll, after we look at this clip, we'll talk about what that means. And then he started to look into it about what it means so we can understand what is the reality of what we see with Kamala Harris. Why did it happen? What does it mean? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the first things we should look at is African-American voters because these are, they make up 20 percent of the electorate. They are a huge part of the Democratic primary process. No Democratic candidate has won the nomination since at least 1992 without winning the majority of African-Americans. And take a look at this trend line among them. So this is in the Quinnipiac University polls. Mm -hmm. Look at this. So Joe Biden has been leading with them the entire time. But what happened in the June slash July numbers that occurred right after the debate? Kamala Harris jumped all the way up from 8% to 27%. Joe Biden fell from 44% to 31%, a near even matchup. And that mirrored what was a near even matchup in the polls just after that first debate. So I don't get it. So if she goes into the debate, she gives him that pop in the nose. He wasn't ready for it. He doesn't handle it. She's got the t-shirts ready to sell on the success. Where to go? Uh, well, it went in a number of different ways. And I think one of the things that we should point out here, and this is very, very important. And this just is a question that Pew Research asked, which is, are you excited about the other candidates? And asked us of different candidate supporters. And what do we see here? This is very important. 78% of Kamala Harris supporters say that they are excited about the other candidates, which means they're much. 
Sorry about that. There was a bit at the beginning that was less relevant, but you saw from the video that it said 80% of Elizabeth Warren supporters uh, can get excited about other candidates, whereas Bernie's was only at 47%. So there is room for Elizabeth Warren supporters to move over to Bernie. It is an interesting thing to note because Elizabeth Warren's support isn't as, as firm on her. And I think that's an important point it's an important point that the same holds true for Joe Biden, but the same does not hold true for Bernie Sanders. And that might be because people see that Bernie has been consistent and that Bernie does have these policies that go far further than anyone else's policies. And voters are seeing just how important this is, climate change, uh, workers' rights, Everything that Bernie focuses on, these progressive policies, are important to each and every one of us, no matter if we're Democrats or not. And the, the statistics show that, uh, the polls show that people across the board support policies like what Bernie proposes. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. <laughs> <laughs>